Hey everyone, I'm so excited to have you here for my very first cooking video. Just to get some things off the to-do list, I want to illustrate to you all that I want this to be a welcoming and inviting space. I'm going to be double dipping with spoons. I don't have the fanciest equipment. I use very general mixing bowls and nine times out of ten I'm going to be in a t-shirt and sweatpants. So I want you to feel like you're in a kitchen stool watching me cook going through the motions with me. So for my very first cooking installment I wanted to make an apple cinnamon loaf. Kind of like a banana bread but with apples. So to get us started um, in a big mixing bowl we're going to take one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So I've got all my measuring stuff. Got my all-purpose flour. Here's about one cup. And here is half a cup. And to that, we are going to add one and three quarters teaspoon of baking powder. Don't get confused like I do and mix up baking soda and baking powder because it will not turn out in your favor. So here is one teaspoon. One quarter. Two. That's about three, okay? So those are the majority of our dry ingredients. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. I find that salt really brings out the sweetness, so just measure this with your eyes. That should be about, a little bit more. That should be about good. And the recipe also calls for eggs. So in plant-based baking, we don't really use eggs and there are several substitutes um, you can use chia seeds flax seeds bananas applesauce so many different options but my personal favorite is to use milled flax seeds this recipe calls for two plant-based eggs so i'm going there's my you're going to want to preheat to 350 by the way here is my one tablespoon for every egg, it's one tablespoon of flax seeds to three tablespoons of water. So in total, we are going to do one, two tablespoons of flax seeds, two, one, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of water and just let that rest for a minute. So in a separate bowl, we are going to do the brown sugar and cinnamon portion of this. So we're going to take a third cup of brown sugar, which I'm just eyeballing because I have lost my third measuring cup. So it's about half of a half. That's that's good enough. And we're gonna make a mess because this is this is real. This is real life. We're gonna get messy. So we've got one third cup of brown sugar, and you're gonna want to add some cinnamon. I don't measure cinnamon. When spirit tells me to stop is when I stop pouring the cinnamon. So that feels right. That feels right. I'm gonna grab a spoon, we're gonna mix that together. Just get it well incorporated. another bowl. We are going to add white sugar. We need two-thirds cup of white sugar. So 
I'm gonna do a half of a cup plus two tablespoons because again, my third measuring cups have gone missing in action. That's about one tablespoon and one more. Okay. Now, for future reference, when I talk about ingredients, I'm not always going to say dairy-free butter or vegan eggs, but it's always assumed that I am using the dairy-free, the egg-free, the plant-based version. So we're going to take one stick or half a cup of your plant-based butter. Make sure to get all the goodness out. And you're gonna wanna kinda cream this together until it's well incorporated. The butter needs to be softened just to ensure that you can kind of get everything mixed together. This butter and sugar to start out with. Should look a little bit like this. Now we're gonna take our flax eggs and add them one egg at a time. So I'm gonna do about half at first, incorporate that, and then we'll add the other half. Here's the other half going in. ingredients that I just don't care to measure um, you know until it feels right is when you stop pouring eh, about a tablespoon and a or a teaspoon and a half that's just what we're going with mix that in to this bowl we are going to add our flour, baking powder, and salt. Get that well incorporated. Did I mention we'd be making a mess? Perhaps a spoon would have been better to start this adventure with. Grab your spoon. Okay. Now for this next part, you can use any kind of plant milk that you want. Um, I have an excess of almond milk on hand, so I'm going to use about half of a cup of almond milk. Make sure to shake it. Oat milk would also be great with this. Um, I'm going to be utilizing oat milk for the glaze. So I've got half a cup. Add that in. until well combined. And again, don't worry about following along with me in this recipe because the palatable visual recipe will be linked to this video. So don't, don't be rushing trying to scribble 
me talking at 100 miles an hour. And a little bit about me, guys. I've been plant-based since I was 12 years old. Um, I remember the day I turned plant-based, I was on my eighth grade trip, seventh or eighth grade trip, and we were eating at Longhorn Steakhouse in Pigeon Forge. And I ordered a steak and I was looking at it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? So from that day forward, I, you know, made the decision of compassion and kindness. And it's been a journey. This world has really evolved to be more accommodating to plant-based eaters. But in my over decade of experience, I have learned the tricks and through trial and error, I will say, and I'm very excited to take you all along with me. Okay, so we've got our batter. And let's not forget about our cinnamon sugar mix. And I also pre-chopped about three apples. You can use whatever apples you like. I used one Gala, one Envy, and one Granny Smith just for some variety. So to our pre-greased loaf pan, we're gonna add, I used coconut oil to grease this. You can use whatever you have. We're gonna add half of our batter. That's, that's about half. Nothing has to be perfect. We're just, we're doing the best that we can. It all goes to the same place. Half of our batter. And then what we're gonna do is add half of our apples and half of our cinnamon brown sugar mix. So I've kind of mixed these up to get variety in each of the layers. And I like, I'm, I'm a sauce and a topping girl. So the more stuff, the Ben and Jerry's non-dairy is my favorite because it has lots of junk in it. So that's what I try to emulate in my baking as well. You could probably get away with two apples. I think I might actually have too many. And take half of your brown sugar this is real we use our hands and just sprinkle that evenly throughout awesome. and then top with the rest of your batter I feel like I need background noise or some music playing. Try to get as much out as you can. Again, just using our fingers. Just get in there, don't be shy. Make sure it's covering as much as it can. I know it's hard the apples want to stick to the batter and come up, but just do, do the best you can and that'll be great. Okay. The remaining apples in brown sugar cinnamon, we're going to add to the top. layer on there. Perfect. It's going to get a nice crust on it from this brown sugar caramelizing. Okay, by this point you should be nice and st sticky. <laughs> so go ahead and rinse your hands off. This is gonna go in the oven for about 40 minutes at 350. It's nice and pretty. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our glaze. So 
So I'm just gonna use the same bowl that the brown sugar and cinnamon was in. Why not? And we're going to take half a cup of powdered sugar. and two tablespoons of milk. Now for this, I am gonna use oat milk um, just because it's my favorite and I think it'll make a thicker glaze. And I like a lot of glaze, so we're just gonna really measure with our hearts with this one. And you also have to account that my measuring spoon had been used before, so you've got a little bit of slippage. Calories don't count when it's fall. Here's my tablespoon, so I'm gonna shake up my oat milk. Add about two tablespoons. A little more. You can use a fork for this if you have another whisk clean, more power to you, I do not. So I will be using the old fashioned fork as a whisk. If your glaze is too runny, add more powdered sugar. If it's too thick, add more milk. The only drawback to using oat milk is it does have a bit of a, a color to it. It's a little bit more on the tan side, whereas almond milk may be whiter. But this is really just going to kind of melt into the top of our apple cinnamon loaf. This consistency is okay. Um, I think I want a little bit more powdered sugar. I want it a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker so it stays on top. So I'm just going to eyeball a couple sprinkles of powdered sugar. You all haven't been able to tell already, I was born and raised in the South and a couple sprinkles of powdered sugar is probably a quarter of a cup. This is looking a lot better. I'm gonna get all of it too. Okay. Here's what we've got, and it's a little bit thicker, which I think is gonna be great. I'm gonna let that apple loaf finish up in the oven. We're gonna glaze. Welcome back, everyone. I just popped the cinnamon apple loaf out of the oven. I will say it took longer than expected to bake. It could be my oven, but I baked it for about an hour and 20 minutes, um, but it came out perfect, and now we're going to add the glaze. So I've had the glaze in the fridge. It's really thickened up. We're just gonna pour that right on top. Looks great. 